I fucking love Batman. Every day as soon as I wake up, I watch the end of Tim Burton's Batman while I'm in the shower. I co-directed a decent Robin fan film. I even made a commercial for a non-profit that was essentially a Batman parody. I think I've read every single goddamn Batman comic on this goddamn earth. Because I am such a huge Bat fanatic, what I am about to say may surprise you, but Gotham is my favorite TV show right now. I am making this video for the sole purpose of explaining my love for it. I'm also going to pitch everyone on why you need to be watching Gotham. So hopefully by the end of the video you'll go on Netflix or Hulu or fucking Pirate Bay and check it out. Gotham just aired the final episode of season 4 and let me tell you, it became easily my favorite live action Batman thing since well... Let me see here... No... No... The Dark Knight. In order to explain why Gotham is so great, we need to talk a little bit about timeless art and tone. Timeless art is pretty self-explanatory. It is art that is timeless. It can't be dated. Gotham, like the city itself, is timeless. The Anton First-esque set design, cars, and props would lead you to believe it takes place in the 60s or the 70s. But the way characters behave could lead you to believe the show takes place as early as the 30s or as late as today. Jim Gordon talks like an old 60s cop. And then you, and you, just need to stay out of my way. Harvey sounds like your goofy drunk uncle who lives right down the street from you. We are the cops. Do not tell us stuff like this. Villains like the Penguin or the Riddler have insanely poetic, almost Shakespearean-like dialogue. Rivers of blood in the streets, I know it. I, I can see it coming. Gotham pulls from every era to create this perfect mixture of people, places, and things that make it completely unique. I could make an entire video about timeless art, but here's a quick visual example. I like Arrow, but in 20 years, do you think this joke will be relevant? Yeah, I highly recommend Carmen Golden. Which one is she? The one who looks like the chick from Twilight. What's Twilight? You're so better off not knowing. References like that, although enjoyable at the time, dates the entire show or film. Which means, unfortunately, as time goes on, people will talk about it less and less. Gotham takes a page from the animated series, keeping Gotham City in art deco, or dark deco, timeless hell on earth. And the cool sense of design and stylishness from the Art Deco years was an operation well up until the 90s. That way you could have kind of a rounded look to the cars and a, a stylish look to the buildings. You could have television and computers, but everything would have a black and white screen. You could believe that Batman could operate in a world that looked like that. Now as important as Gotham City is to the show Gotham, we need to talk about what makes or breaks any interpretation of the Dark Knight, Bruce Wayne. Bruce is portrayed by a young actor named David Mazous. Hopefully I said his name right. Let me just say, David Mazous is fucking incredible. I believe he's the best Bruce Wayne ever put to film easily. He actually speaks like Batman. His dialogue is insanely stilted and that's a good thing. You came here for a reason I imagine. 12 year old Bruce speaks like a disillusioned wise old man, as he should. Bruce Wayne should be the smartest person in any and every room. And I often feel like that's an aspect of the character that directors miss. For some reason I never bought Bale or Affleck or even Keaton as the world's greatest detective, but I buy Mazus as smarter than every on-screen Batman. And it's not just luck, he is nothing like Bruce in real life. But let's look at the good guys, you know what? You got Bruce, you got Gordon, you got Bullock, you got Alfred. I've put my investigation into my father's company aside. It's time I moved on. Why the sudden change of heart? It's far from sudden. I've given it a great deal of thought. I can't live my life if I keep looking back. See? That's a damn good performance. All the actors in Gotham bring their A-game except maybe the doofus who played Mr. Freeze. What's so hard about getting Mr. Freeze right on screen? Anyways, with all these incredible performances from the good guys, the bad guys, and everyone in between, Gotham is able to jump from tone to tone seamlessly. There are so many fucking tones in Gotham, like a literal shit ton. The show ranges from extremely violent and dark to some of the goofiest writing you've ever seen on TV. And because the show knows what it's doing, Gotham's goof is perfect. Let me clarify, goofy does not mean bad. I feel like nowadays if something is called goofy on the internet, it means childish and stupid. Goofy should not have a negative connotation. Hell, some of my favorite movies are completely goofy. Batman is a comic book character. He has been a detective, had rainbow costumes, fought aliens, had several different kid sidekicks, died and come back, time traveled, and abused a 12 year old boy. Batman is goofy. His tone is constantly changing and so is Gotham's. The show thrives off these goofy, silly, verging on almost soap opera-like plots because that's how it should be. 
The show has clones, twin brothers, and everything in between, but still can be taken seriously because of the stakes the show presents. Gotham is not afraid to switch tones or kill its characters and then bring them back to life only to kill them again because Gotham frankly has balls. Gotham has 88 episodes, each about 45 minutes long, which is like, what, 66 hours of television? I could break down each season or each episode, but we would be here for a long time and neither of us have the time for that. So in order to really understand and pinpoint why Gotham is so fucking great, I'm going to focus on one episode in particular. Season 2 episode 14, This Ball of Mud and Meanness, my personal favorite episode of the entire series. In this episode, Bruce finally tracks down the man who pulled the trigger on Thomas and Martha Wayne. His name is Matches Malone. Bruce confronts Malone in possibly the best scene in the entire series. Hey, it's Alex. Uh, I'm about to show a two minute clip. Don't click off the video. Maybe skim through it if you don't want to watch it, but there's points after the video. Don't be a dude. It's way of the world, isn't it, son? Don't call me son. Why? If I did what you think I did, then I made you what you are. Just like Gotham made me. I might as well call you son. Here's to you, son. You've been a long time coming. You want me to kill you. Why? A man gets tired. Doing wrong and going unpunished. Nothing happens. You start to wonder if there is a God. Come on, pull the damn trigger. No. Don't lose your nerve now. Do it. Look at me. I'm a monster. You need to kill me. I wish you were a monster. Nice work. You're just a man. Career, General. Bruce! He's in there. Not only is this scene written and directed incredibly well, but I honestly believe this singular scene focuses on Bruce, his fundamental beliefs, and his psyche more than 90% of Batman films. The person who killed Thomas and Martha is not a monster. He is just a man. A man like Malone or Joe Chill in the comics, made the Batman. This scene right here is essentially the birth of Batman. Which is why at the end of the episode, Bruce must leave. He needs to understand why people like Malone or Penguin or the Riddler or Jerome are the way they are. To understand where all this evil and hatred comes from, Bruce must first understand Gotham. And that's why Gotham is called Gotham and not pre-Batman Bruce Wayne learning to be Batman featuring the entire Batman's rogues gallery minus the name The Joker because Warner Brothers would rather invest in this than this. The central character in Gotham is not Bruce Wayne. It's not Jim Gordon, Harvey Bullock, Alfred, Selina Kyle. It's not the Riddler or the Penguin or any of the villains. The central character is Gotham. Gotham creates demons, creates villains, turns good men bad, and bad men good. But perhaps most importantly, Gotham creates Batman. And I fucking love Batman. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm too poor for going to a water park, so I'm uh, at a natural water slide. Hopefully I don't die. Uh, comment below, what's your favorite uh, Batman incarnation? Do you watch Gotham? If so, what do you like about it? If not, why don't you watch Gotham? Uh, you can support us on Patreon so I can afford to go to a real water park. Thank you. Link down below. Thanks guys for watching. So I just went down the slide of death. I think I may have sprained my fucking arm or ankle. And I'm all cut up. I really thought it was over and all I could think was fuck, I didn't finish the Gotham video.